All right, so the original poster on the forum of the Intel 7 nanometers delay story is illegal water and also vegetable stew. Uh, this is real rough. During their Q2 2020 earnings call this week, Intel announced that it has now delayed the rollout of 7 nanometer CPUs by six months relative to their previously planned release date. Uh, yields for their 7 nanometer process are now 12 months behind the company's internal targets. Um, so I guess that means they must have had like a six month buffer compared yeah. for their for their public release versus their internal targets. And they have chewed through all of it and then some. And if you guys recall, part of Intel's story around the 10 nanometer delays was, hey, guys, here's the plan. We're going to fast track 7 nanometer so that, uh, you know, yeah, this 10 nanometer delay won't happen so much. We're just gonna kind of, we're just gonna kind of move move past it. Um, not so much. Now both 10 and 7 nanometer have been delayed substantially. So they're saying now that their 7 nanometer CPUs will not de debut on the market until late 2022 or early 2023. Ooh. Ooh. Here's the craziest part. Luke, did you ever think you would live to see the day that Intel would consider using a third-party foundry? Third-party foundry. No. A third-party foundry. I knew exactly where you're going with that, and no, not at all. That's, me neither. That, that is the most surprising part of this whole conversation. As as the, hold on, hold on. What? It, what I think it was Jerry Sanders, the uh, third. Where, where's that quote? Foundries. Real men have fabs was what Jerry Jerry Sanders, uh, AMD founder Jerry Sanders lobbed against rivals. Um, now, obviously... Um, it's a little dated. Yeah, obviously AMD doesn't use their own foundries anymore. Uh, so, And Jerry, Jerry Sanders, to be clear, was the founder of AMD, not Intel. Uh, Jerry Sanders III. Um, but I think Intel has definitely still taken that approach and yet, yeah. here we are. The contingency plan is to use third-party foundries. <sighs> oh, so I, I, yeah, I, I I still feel like long-term they'll move back away from it. I, I feel like it's a we are we have been falling, and we are gaining speed in a downward direction, and we need something to try to swoop us back up. And I th and I think once they stop just like I just said, gaining speed in a downward direction like they have been for years at this point. Can I just say um, I love that? Gaining <laughs> speed in a downward direction. <laughs> um, I, I, th I think they'll move back to just their own fabs eventually. But it might be quite a while. So, Well, as long as they don't have process leadership, what else are they supposed to do? They have to stay competitive. So yep. allegedly, they're going to be using third-party foundries for the chiplets or tiles in their forthcoming 7 nanometer GPUs called Ponte Vecchio. I don't know what language that is, so hopefully I didn't butcher the accent too bad. And then their first 7 nanometer server CPUs, Granite Rapids, are now supposed to arrive in 2023. That's a year late. Meanwhile, AMD's roadmap outlines 5 nanometer Genoa processors coming before the end of 2022. I do want to interrupt this broadcast to bring you a bit of a, a reality flash. Just because one manufacturer says this is our seven nanometer process and another says this is our five nanometer process does not necessarily mean that that five nanometer process actually has greater transistor density than yeah. the seven nanometer one. So yeah. if you look, I mean, really, I would love to see us transition just to transistor density as opposed to some arbitrary measurement. We did a really great tech wiki uh, probably about a couple months ago now that went through the different methods that chip manufacturers have used to measure how many nanometers a processor is. Like it used to be it was just the gate length. But then what happened was it was able to shrink more than other essential features of the transistor. And so even though you had these much smaller gates, the actual transistor density on the silicon was not higher. So they switched to, well, OK, now let's measure it this way. So it's it's not like this sort of fixed way of 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 measuring the, the density of a chip. I, I really wish that everyone would use something kind of similar, but um, to be clear, 
Intel ain't leading the pack anymore. However, you'll want to measure it um, if this <laughs> if this comes to fruition. And it looks like yeah. investors have reacted to that news. I mean, this is from uh, July twenty fourth, one thirty two p.m. So this is from four hours ago, and they had already dropped sixteen percent today. I'm just gonna have a look at Intel stock. Uh, as far uh, as I know, it's now negative sixteen percent. Okay, so oh, it looks like. Um, it's uh oh has it closed for the day i can never remember like when it closes yeah it's a, it's an after hours trading apparently it's up a touch but uh it still ain't uh ain't a good look for intel right now because the thing too is intel's trying to transition to be you know we want to be more than just a cpu company right like they want to be a, a semiconductor company well fun fact if you want to be a semiconductor company not just a cpu company you still need cutting edge you know manufacturing capabilities so that's that's real that's real awkward right there right now yeah, yeah. and not not that it's like super important with the current conversation ponte vecchio which i am 100 percent certain i just butchered is a bridge in italy thank you for that yeah now everyone knows at least those people who are clever enough to watch the wan show every week they know <laughs> oh big brain uh, all right, so Intel's first seven nanometer processors are now scheduled to debut for either laptops or desktops in 2021 Q2. <gasps> man, they're gonna, oh man, this is gonna be rough. Ooh. Like, if if you're one of the people who's still cheering for Intel, um, man, when, when Zen 3 hits later this year, AMD, meanwhile, has confirmed yet again, uh, those rumors that we're delaying Zen 3, not true. We are launching Zen 3 this year. Um, Zen 3 is rumored to have a significant performance uplift compared to Zen 2. I don't know what they're going to do. They, they might start to do some crazy stuff, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, to yep. be clear, even Zen 3, it's not like Intel isn't still going to have a competitive performing product. Where they're going to run into trouble is their costs. Because AMD's chiplet design is so economical. Not to mention that if AMD gets a node out ahead of them, it's not just going to be more economical because chiplets. It could be more economical just because the die sizes can be so much smaller. Like it's, oh boy, is it, is that ever going to be a rough, rough freaking ride? Like, I don't even know. What would you do? Okay, Luke, I know too much, so I can't speculate, but you can. What would you do if you're Intel and you're like, your cost is higher than your competitor and you are slightly behind, you know, that's what I'm expecting when Zen 3 launches. I'm expecting them to be slightly behind in raw performance with significantly worse power consumption and therefore heat output. What do you do? Uh, I don't know. They're in such a rough spot. Uh, I think personally that I would almost sit on my laurels pick a few chips, try to find a way to make them as cheaply as possible, make them cheaper on the market and look for wins with those chips. Like, okay, this chip is gonna be like the best for 95% of, or 99% if we're being honest, like gamers. of like all gamers. This chip is gonna be the best for like 99% of office users. They're not, they're not the most fancy. Maybe it's a four core. Most games still don't really care beyond that. But go, go value. Yeah. The thing, the problem is that AMD winning. Can... And like Zen four is going to show yeah. up and you're still going to have nothing. <sighs> like AMD so is like, going to be able to react to that. Like what if AMD just yeah. drops their price? Probably. They've got the yeah, margin. They They've got the margin to work with. Yeah, they totally could. But I think at the same time, you'd hopefully be like winning hearts and minds, which is something Intel has not done for a long time. And them acting first and making AMD drop their price might do that. Instead of them being the ones that are like, yup, our extreme edition costs 500 bucks more now. Get wrecked. Here's my Why? problem. Get wrecked. You know what? No, like, no, no. I don't think they. I don't think they have the balls. There, you heard it here first. I don't think they have the stones. And you know why? 
I think they're, well, okay, I don't know, maybe, maybe the attitude changes today. Maybe the milk is treated as spilt at this point, since the stock, the stock price took the hit already anyway. But now the disconnected executives, as far as I can tell, um, maybe they got a reality check here. Maybe they just felt it in their wallets and might actually pay more. attention. Yeah, maybe they might do something. But here's my problem, because Intel knew they already knew when they launched Z490, there's no way that executives hadn't already been briefed on that seven nanometer had problems. Like if we're finding out in an earnings call, the, 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 the people at Intel aren't hearing this for the first time unless they're com in a completely different business unit. Like the, the chip guys knew. So why would it be then if they knew that they had nothing to fight AMD with for the next 18 months at least? Like, hold on a second, seven nanometer CPUs, blah, blah, hold on a second. Um, uh, wait a minute, seven nanometer will not debut. Okay, it looks like we've got a couple different dates in, in our notes here. One of them says first seven nanometer processors, 2021 Q2, and another one says late 2022 or early 2023. That sounds more like it. So anyway, they knew they have, they knew they have nothing for two years, right? So why do they go and pull consumer unfriendly moves like limiting the maximum memory speed on the value chipsets? If the plan was to say, okay, we need to be, we need to win over consumers by being consumer friendly. Because the thing is, Intel still has. Oh yeah, that does not seem like the plan. But, currently at but that all. Needs you, to but, be but the you asked plan. what I I know. You asked what I would do though. Not what I think Intel would do. Can I can we make that a bracelet? What would Intel do? <laughs> what would Intel do? And it's just like the evil version. <laughs> it's not even evil. It's just like it's like I you know dumb. <laughs> it's the low IQ version. It's <laughs> So there's been so many moves for so long. I really wish there was a follow-up. I've, I've actually mentioned this on, on WAN show a couple of times. I had, I had a conversation with someone at Intel and they asked me like how I thought they were doing in a bunch of different realms. Uh, they were talking about uh, like processors for cloud compute, which is a very different conversation than processors for gaming. But I have some insight into that due to float plane and all this other kind of stuff. And it's a really good conversation. And they're like, yeah, we should follow up on this. And like, I'd like to hear more like honest answers to these questions. And I think more people in the company need them. And I was like, yeah. And then there was just dead air. But that's their it's problem like, is they have so many oh. people there that care so much. And, yeah, and, and like and that get person it. clearly did care. Yeah. But and, probably internally was shut down in some way. So there was like no, I don't even blame them for not really following up. There was probably no point. I got the funniest DM from one Dr. Cutris. You, you know Dr. Cutris, right? Of course. Of course. Of course. The one and only Dr. Cutris. Um, he goes, so he was clearly watching my cool. my recent rant video because he, he goes, quote, stop listening to bean counters, end quote. New line, promote CFO to CEO, laughing emoji. And I'm like... <laughs> There's, yeah, I know. There's but... a really good quote. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Uh, uh, it just made me laugh so hard. Like it's not, Ian doesn't message me that much because he and I were in different time zones and like, I don't know, we're, we're not very rarely working on like the same project at the same time for, that would give us cause for collaboration or whatever. There's no trade shows this year, so we can't go get ramen in the middle of the night or whatever. Um, so we don't. That, that's the part I miss the most for sure. I so we don't. Said that a lot. We don't talk that much. But like out of out of every time we've talked, that is the hardest I have ever laughed. When I got that DM just out of nowhere in the middle of the afternoon, and I'm like, yeah, pretty much. I just thought of a pretty interesting idea. Yeah. You should host like a round table, a live like a live stream that's just like a round table of tech mine. Of tech what? Tech minds. But that like would be fun. A, a like Zoom meeting round table of tech minds. I mean, that's kind of what the WAN show was supposed to be with like guests yeah. and stuff. We could kind of try and do that again. Do you want to bring guests on the show again? I'd be interested. Yeah. Okay. Like we're we're not having these like 
internal among tech people conversations because we're not going to these shows and having those ramen meetings. Yeah. Which is a good way to describe it. So I think I think that could be pretty cool. Oh, people are asking which Ian. Um, Ian is Dr. Dr. Ian Cutris uh, oh, from goodness. Anon Tech. And also, I really think he needs to rename this. I don't think it's great branding, but... Um, you know, he's more he's more of like a tech mind and less of like a branding mind, I suppose. Uh, his YouTube channel is Tech Tech Potato. Uh, he recently leveled up his thumbnail game and he went from doing like 800 views a video to like 8,000 views a video. Nice. And cool. Yeah. Yeah. See, he's... <laughs> they all they all give in in the end. Do you see... Uh... <laughs> You see what was it snazzy doing like sponsored vacuum videos now it's so great oh, yeah, yeah welcome, they, welcome to the welcome to the squad everybody falls um <laughs> i was just the first anyway okay, so i want to get through this just before we we fine, get too fine, far fine. away from it yeah you mentioned the the promote cfo to ceo position <laughs> laugh emoji thing. so whether you like it or not there's a quote from elon musk that i've always really liked um the path to the CEO's office should not be through the CFO's office, and it should not be through the marketing department. It needs to be through engineering and design. 100%. 100%. Especially in that type of company. I'm sure there are some companies where like, no, it's literally just a marketing company. Yeah. It should not necessarily be that way. If you're a creative agency, you should have a marketer. Then, but I think that's what he means, yeah. though is whoever is sitting in the CEO's office should have the expertise that, or should have expertise in that company's core business. And, you know, Tesla, I don't care what kind of engineer you put in the CEO's office, software engineer, hardware engineer, you could make the argument either way for what kind of a company they are, a software or hardware company, they're both. So I don't care what kind of engineer it is, but it should absolutely, I mean, they literally, as a policy, don't market. I mean, they market, yeah. but not in, in not in a conventional sense. In different way, yeah, in very different ways. Yes. So putting putting some some MBA, you know, friggin', you know, MBA mill graduate in there who all they know how to do is pump the stock price. That that's not how you build a good fundamental business. You have to actually understand what you're doing. So yeah, if you work at some creative agency, sure, you could have a marketing person sitting in the CEO's office. Why not? Because that's literally all you do. If you're a YouTube company like we are, you should have someone who actually lives and breathes it. Like I remember talking to, uh, I was actually talking to my wife about this. I was like, well, if I die, you know, what's the plan? And she's like, I, fe I feel like I would have a really hard time, you know, fulfilling those CEO duties because there's things that, you know, you get your hands dirty with that I haven't touched and you've been doing it for 12 years. And I'm like, yeah, but we need to do something. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about the plan. There is a plan. I, I don't like dwelling on it too much because, you know, it's like every time I talk about like wills and succession and like all that kind of stuff, it makes me all down. So I don't want to do that. But, um, these are the kinds of conversations we've had to have, and these are the sorts of things that we've had to be aware of, is that you have to fundamentally understand all aspects of the business if you want to be CEO. And if you don't get engineering, you shouldn't be the CEO of Intel. Now, I don't know if their CFO has some engineering experience that I'm you know, not privy to. Um, I would imagine that being at a company like Intel, you'd pick up a thing or two here and there. I mean, I've learned more about cameras and film than I could okay, have yeah. ever cared to know, just hanging out with Brandon all day. You're a small company, though, and you hang out with Brandon all day. And I've heard Those stories about Intel that would lead me to believe that that might not be the case. Yes. There you go. I don't know if Bob Swan plays golf. Uh, we could find out easily enough with Google. I would... I feel like I'd bet money on it. Would you? Would you bet money on it? I just, it's just so like pervasive in that community. Anyone with just like way too many millions probably seems to play golf. I can't it find, just, I can't find anything about golf. Why would you know though? Like, I don't know. It's not on here. It's not on here. There's no mention whatsoever. He's not like a president. Like I don't, th I don't think people are gonna like follow him around in that way. You know? Uh, I think we would still know. He's enough of a public fee. He's enough of a public figure that we'd probably know a fair bit, a fair bit about his uh, about his habits.